You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. What's up, gang? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. If you'd like to email the show, you can send a message to Packers Total Access at gmail.com. Just want to say we've got a packed house tonight. We've got Mr. Ryan Schlipp. We've got Coach Han and our buddy Jacob all live here to talk about this wonderful game that we just experienced together. And um, also, I just want to say, uh, man, watching that intro, that feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? I mean, seeing that that Super Bowl run and and back when we had a, of course, we got to pick six today, right? I mean, come on. Yeah. When that play happened, I'm just going to kick it off. We're going to be sporadic tonight. We're going to have a conversation about some football. When that when that ball got picked off and it went for six, I went, here we go. This is the point in the season where we go. That's when things turned around, right? And yeah, here we are with a two point loss. So if you guys haven't caught on, the Packers dropped another tough one today on the road. It was 23 21 to the Commanders. Um, let's just kind of get it started off. Uh, let's get it started off on a positive note, if we will. You guys, we had the offensive line shuffle, right? And um, obviously, uh, David Bakhtiari was, uh, you know, inactive, kind of a game time decision type thing. And we were all, I know I was, I don't want to speak for everyone. I was very surprised when I seen Zach Tom was going to be playing left tackle. And lo and behold, he come out of the gates and played really, really well, right? So let's start right there. I, uh, Coach Hans, we got you on the line. What did you think of Zach Tom today? Yo, I straight up loved him. I loved everything about it. And and it was very obvious to me that, you know, I, a tough situation for the kid to go into, right? Rookie, not a ton of meaningful snaps. And all of a sudden you're starting and you're against Montez Sweat and you're the starting left tackle. So Green Bay out of the gate did a lot of things to protect him, right? A lot of quick game, a um, lot of, a lot of, uh, really nice protected things as far as sliding to him or giving him some running back help or, or tight end help. But then, yo, as the game wore on, and we were just talking about this, after halftime and then moving forward into the third, and then actually when it really became awesome was in the fourth quarter, Green Bay really started to trust dude, like really trusted him. You saw them slide the protection away, put him on an island one-on-one -on -one with Montez Sweat, and they're like, Okay, he's he's literally shutting it down. And you can watch Washington get frustrated with that because midway through the fourth quarter, they switched Sweat over to his unnatural side so that he could go against Josh Lyman, hoping to actually get a little bit of pressure because Zab Tom was shutting him down. He didn't have a perfect game. You know, there were a couple of times where, yeah, he missed a block on some pin and pull stuff and, and that stuff. But, yo, straight up out of the gate, you know, he, it, it allowed Elton to go to his natural position at guard. And Zach Tom showed an awful lot of promise today. Absolutely. Jacob, you got something, man? I just – Coach, did anybody in their wildest dreams, Ryan, uh, anyone, left Tom, uh, left left tackle Tom, left tackle, was it, uh, uh, <laughs> was that then Elton, center Myers, right 
guard was Runyon then, and then right yep. tackle. Yeah, I mean, I did not have that in my bingo card. I did no. not even think there was a possible situation there. But when I saw it, I, I'll be honest, I was like, okay, all right, well, that's – I can live with that, you know. And and as I coach said, at first I was like, ah, I don't know how this is going to work. But um, going in I, – I think that Yash again. I people, have, I feel like that they don't give this guy enough credit. Like he he sufficed pretty well at a left tackle, like in the starting NFL, for many many weeks. And we were all like, ah, whatever, you know, it's Yash. And then the guy just switches over to right tackle. Into I don't know the, the exact specs yet. Um, coach probably knows more than I do. He seemed like he did okay enough, right? And then left tackle didn't seem like it was. It seemed like the sky was falling. And then John Runyon. I like the fact that we can plug him in at different, you know, guard positions there. So in my opinion, today was not a total loss. I mean, granted, you watch the score and you say, oh, my God, this is a horrible thing. I was uh, I had to watch the first quarter at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings again next to a guy that was a diehard <laughs> Reds, Washington football fan. And there you uh, go. so Good he <laughs> see what I did there. And this guy was just like so happy that he was in the game in the first quarter. And I'm just like, it's, it's kind of perspective, right? So like we sat there, I I've watched the first quarter now at Buffalo wild wings with a jets fan, with a giants fan, now with the commanders fan. And they all were so excited to be in the game in the first half. And then, okay, wow. I mean, I just, I looked at all of them like, Oh, you silly, silly fan. You, oh, <laughs> how you'll learn in a quarter. And then I go home and I'm crying and I'm, you know, whatever. Right. Right. They're oh, hey, celebrating. You said, you you said a couple of really key things there. You know, the, the fact that Runyon bumped over to right guard allows Elton to get into his real natural position. And the reason they did that, I'm convinced, so that Elton could help out Tom with some of the stuff. Because you literally watch Rodgers, especially in the first quarter, go like this. You know, that's the signal that, that hey, can, 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 can. Exactly. Or, or he's pointing off to a linebacker, meaning we're going to set him as the mic because the coverage dictates that the other guy has to be in cover, you know, that sort of stuff. So you can see Elton kind of start to help out Tom there. So it was really intentional that they put Elton at left guard. That means Runyon is now playing out of standard position. Now you got Yash over at right tackle. And, and I know there's some fans coming at Yash and, you know, whatever, rightfully so for those two holding calls. But you got to understand when you're playing line, you are absolutely blind to the ball. And those two holding calls are things that you have to live with as an O-line coach because they're blind to the ball. So if that, that quarterback leaves the pocket, the defender can see it. They can shock and shed. They can redirect. And now you're playing reactive as opposed to proactive. And you're going to get some of those holds. So that's fine. Like overall, that offensive line played unbelievably well. And it is absolutely criminal that they only ran the ball 12 times. I digress. <laughs> I know this. So we got Zach Miller in the chat. He said, shut this down right now. I've got a quiz and not, I need to study. And I'll tell you this, man, kudos to you, Zach. I'd be worried about that grade rather than talking about this tough loss. But, um, Ryan, you are the, the – Ryan Schlipp is definitely the president of the uh, Zach Tom fan club. And I always refer to him as that. He's the guy that on draft night I was going, Zach Tom, who's Zach Tom? And Ryan was excited about it. What did you think, man? I got to get your take, and then we'll move on to another topic. But what well, did you think of your boy, Zach Tom? I'm I'm just excited to go watch him because I I every time before a game it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this or that or whatever you know on defense I'm gonna watch Quay and see how he's doing on offense I want to see Zach Tom but once the games go I can't man I'm watching the ball I'm a fan I can't <laughs> help it I'm not I'm not Coach Hawn he's a coach at heart I'm just a fan but I am excited to go back and watch it because I mean not not just him the entire offensive line I was I was saying I I, I almost finished the podcast here. And I wanted to go back and look at it, and I was talking about how it seemed like I don't know, but it seemed like Zach Tom had a good day, and uh, the offensive line did. And I'm like, I don't think uh, Montez Sweat had a sack all day. And I went back and looked; nobody had a sack all day. So you know, the 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 offensive line did a and and who would have thought that? I mean, I I I put it out on Twitter before the game that I thought this was going to be a disaster because number one, how many guys are in different positions? Josh Myers is the only guy that's staying in the same spot. Yeah. And then you got two guys coming out that that haven't played that are playing the two most important positions, and every the other guys all switched around. It's like this this can't go well. I mean, it's it's not even meant to be a knock on the on the offensive lineman. This is this is set up to fail. This is a disaster, and for them to come out and do that, um, like uh, like Jacob was saying, you know, it, it's a disaster. But there were some positives, and that was one of the biggest ones. Um, unfortunately, my my other prediction that was wrong. 
was that if we could fix the offensive line, the offense will will massively improve. And I was way <laughs> off on that one because it did not improve. Um, I, I I I guess I can't blame the offensive line for everything anymore. As far as you know, Aaron Rodgers will be much more accurate if he has a clean pocket. That was not the case, and we'll run the ball more. Like Coach On was saying, if if you know if we can block better and we trust it more, we'll run. Nope, we're not doing that either. So I don't know. It's still a positive, but it's it's unfortunate that that really didn't have the impact it should have on the offensive performance. I'm just I'm just gonna go out there and like um, Clayton for the first time. Oh man, I thought if you guys were in our group chat, you're like, oh my god, Clayton and Jacob are really heated right now. They're in a, a heated <laughs> back and forth. Basically, all I said was that like I I just. I, I'm sick of this play calling. I at this point in this season, I I will admit that in the heat of the uh, you know when you get when you're in the middle of a loss like that and you're um, and you're just like, questioning what what then I'll admit I I went to the dark side. I started saying like all right, what the heck, get rid of Barry. Ooh. And in my head, uh, <laughs> trust me, I I, I just. I fell victim to that and to the point now where I'm actually thinking like, what does Barry have to offer? And I'm sorry. Like if you guys can, I, I wish Sam Holman was on the podcast because I think that he would actually give more astute answer as to the X's and O's. But to me, ah, this whole, you know, Barry, I, like you said, maybe in, in certain podcasts prior, maybe Clayton or uh, I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt because we don't necessarily know what the scheme is, but we're putting people in the best positions. But now I'm looking at it and I go, I'm sorry, but, Devonte Devondre doesn't look good. Quay doesn't look good. We're not utilizing Rashawn in the way we should, Quay, or nor uh, Preston. And I just I feel like that we're putting ourselves in positions where we don't give our guys the benefit of the doubt, or or whatever the case is. And I don't. I'm not an, a defensive guy. I'm not a guru, you know. But all I'll say is that it just it just doesn't look like a defense that I would. It's not something at the beginning of the year when I looked at it on paper and I thought, yeah, this is going to be a top three defense. Now I look at it in the same aspect, same scheme, same people, same players, and I go, yes, yeah, this is a top 25 defense. And I don't know how you remedy that. So um, yeah. if anybody else, coach, if you want to maybe take the floor on that, or I just, I just, I've lost all my confidence in the defense of coaching. And now to me, it's like I need to change and prove me wrong, coach, please, or somebody. Yeah, we, we definitely disagree on that, but I want to hear coach's take here. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I just have a, a real quick rebuttal on that. Um, bottom line, your your defense scored seven points today, and um, it's not like you're True. losing. Games How many points did we lose because Razul Douglas can't grab an interception? Real quick, we should have had <laughs> maybe three, four, four, four picks. Pick <laughs> it's just, four it's pick just like Clayton said earlier. You know, the guys are in position; they still have to execute. To me, that's not a coaching problem. Right. Like, if, if you're yeah, scheming guys true. in that's position true. and they're not executing, that's on the players, and and you need to hold them accountable. Maybe that's where the coaching comes in where you need to hold them more accountable but y'all ain't losing right. games 45 to 41 you lost 23 to 21 and in today's right. nfl with the offensive uh bias if you will 23 points 20 points whatever it is that you you've been losing like to me that's not the problem to me your glaring holes are in special teams and offense i think your defense overall playing pretty well teams are going to score it's the modern nfl right you have all these right. protections you have pass interference uh the, the fact that pass interference is a spot foul and and not a, a 10 yard foul or whatever that is like that sort of stuff That's is crazy. It's, it's absolutely skewed to the offense so so teams are going to score right you have narrow hashes you're going to get the job done um i don't think that the defense I, there's things to fix on the defense don't get me wrong but it's not like it's it's egregious you're not giving up so coach if, if you're head coach your your main focus on the offense not the defense is what you're saying oh no i am absolutely laying up special teams absolutely and we're that's, we're, that's your main we're focus from the top bottom and we're saying listen we are not an arrogant football team we are no longer allowed to be arrogant and you're not allowed to be arrogant players because right now straight up we suck we need our best players on special teams it's a if you're if you're uh it, if you're Versace, if you're a Versace coach, do you then pull Amari Rogers? Is he done? And then you put in maybe Nixon or you something like to. that. You got to. You have to, right? Like you have to at this point. Ryan, yeah, what do you think? I hate you pick special teams, dude. If you look at the, the, the some of the best teams that have come through and won championships, whatever, uh, the, the special teams to me always goes back to the Baltimore Ravens and John Harbaugh. You take a look at it, bro. They had Jacoby Jones returning punts and kickoffs. Yeah. They had Ray Rice 
returning kickoffs yep. in his prime because you want your best players in all three facets of the game. And if you're going to get tired out there, maybe you're not our best player. Maybe you have to take a look at what you're doing conditioning wise. Because if you're going to get tired, if you're going to tell me you're too tired to return a kick, then you're way too tired to take this screen pass to the house. Go sit down. I'm done with it. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Exactly. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. I... I'm going to forget half the things I wanted to say, but but number one, sort of rebuttal to the rebuttal, if if I may with that. Um, as far as the defense, and I agree, offense and special teams are a much bigger concern than defense. But first of all, the team hasn't scored more than hardly 15 points since like week two. So they, they, are, they are the bottom of the barrel offense. So even though that might generally be true, we gave up more points than washington has scored since week two and that's with their backup and you can say the backup's better than the starter if you want but he hasn't played since last year i'm not using that as an excuse um as far as the the coaching thing i do that is kind of where i put the coaching it's not a schematic thing necessarily but when every single player offense defense and special teams is not prepared they're not playing full out they don't i mean the mental breakdowns constantly it's unfair in, in a sense, to, to say that that's the coach's fault when your guys aren't playing well. But, but where else do you put it? it? It it has to fall on the coach to get your guys ready uh, at, at some level. So that's what I said about Matt LaFleur, too. It's, it's unfair for me to say you're doing a great job calling plays and you're doing a great job doing these things and you're putting in the work and you're doing what you need to do, but your guys aren't playing for you. I'm sorry, but that that is that is part of your job. So for me, that is the coaching issue there. Um but yeah, I, I agree on special teams. I, I I always, I've always kind of understood the idea of well, you don't want to get your guys hurt or whatever. But first of all, how often do you see guys get hurt on special? I mean, guys get hurt all the time on defense and offense. They, I I don't see kick returners going out getting carted off every other play. That doesn't happen. And like we said off before we started on this, if you're not going to use Aaron Jones, which is nonsense. But if you're going to refuse to do it, fine. Yeah. Kick return, put him as a kick return. If he's going to get eight carries in yeah. a game. At least put him on ki- on special teams. So, and and again, that that's, that's another kind of uh, coaching issue in terms of decisions like that. I mean, you know, the offensive line. This seems like this is a great shakeup, but it's probably two, three, four weeks too late. Um, that's just one thing. But then on top of that, yeah, special teams. You know, there's been a lot of, especially in Green Bay, a lot of lip service given to we're going to take it seriously this year. This year, we're really going to take. And we never see starters play. We we got scrubs going out there playing. This year, we pay the special teams guy, but we still. I mean. Don't get me wrong. I think Rudy Ford's doing a good job. I think uh, Keyshawn. I, I think the guys that we brought in are, are are playing some good football. But you know, like you said, I mean, the, what good does that do when you know? And I try to even give special teams credit. Like, oh, eight, nine, ten guys are doing a great job. But what about that one guy that caused a, a block punt for a touchdown? That's all it takes is one guy. What about? It doesn't matter if you got ten guys doing a great job blocking if the one guy behind him drops the ball and the defense and the other team recovers it. So. You know, it, it's you, you, like you said, they, they got to be all in and you've got to be a championship team that says we're laying it all on the line to go win. Cause right now they're, they're too, they're trying to be too smart and too, you know, analytical. It sounds like of, of making sure we're doing the right, just, just put your best guys out there, put them at the forefront and let them go play football. We're, we're hiding our best players and I don't understand that. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to back up and talk about defense for a second. In my opinion, <clears throat> I agree with a lot of what coach said, but You know, all we heard a couple weeks ago was, well, really all the way back to the Minnesota game. Why don't we have Jair follow their best receiver? Why don't we have Jair follow their best receiver? Uh, And what was our response? You cannot do that because we're running a Vic Fangio-style defense. There are man combinations. There are man principles within the zone that we run as well. But it's essentially a remove all sugar, too high look, late rotation, going into typically a single high cover three look for the most part. you got some cover six and other things mixed in. We won't get into all the details, but I'll say this. Joe Barry broke. Joe Barry broke, and he started having Jair follow. He started it last week, and what happened? Disaster. He did it today. What happened? Disaster. And this is the problem I have with – it's funny. When I hear somebody explain what you just did, Ryan, I find myself going, he's right, man. That is on the coaches. But then I back up and I go, okay, what's the coach's job? Put your best players in a position to do what they do best. So this is okay. This is we where put we had an argument. Clay, man coverage right? on McLaurin, and here are McLaurin's stats: targeted eight yeah. times, five catches, seventy-three yards, and a touchdown. He bullied Jire all day long. Now you see the eight to five. You think, well, maybe he didn't have a bad game. Not one time did Jire get his hand on the ball. Not once. Now, 
it, this is where I've got to back up. And in my opinion is this roster isn't as loaded as we think it is. It's, you know, for every time that we say Ooh. this is a big talent, this is a loaded <laughs> roster and the coaches aren't, you know, having them perform shots the fired. Fire. Okay. So if you go back to last year, they were elite all of a sudden this year, or I'm sorry, if you go back to last year, it was the coaching staff was great, right? Because the players were making plays. Then you come to this year, the players don't make plays, the coaching staff's garbage. Like, it, the answer, in my opinion, it's a very boring answer, and it, it definitely doesn't carry much weight on Twitter, out in those Twitter streets, as they say. But the answer is everybody's to blame. It's the coaches. It's the players. It's all the way around. And for the first time in the Matt LaFleur tenure, the one thing I will say is it seems like there's a culture problem. It really does. When, when Jair Alexander is in the offseason getting pissy because he didn't get voted team captain by his teammates, that's what – it's one thing if a coaching staff says you're not a captain. I understand you take that personal. When the collective group says here's who our captains are and you get mad about that, what you're saying is my feelings, my opinion is more important than the team. That's a culture problem. And then you come out and you say, I really wish they'd let me follow them. If they'd let me follow the player, right, he had kind of that attitude. And look at Coach Han over here gassing me up. He's going to cause a problem here in a second. <laughs> we wanted it. We gave it to him. And McLaurin handed him his lunch, right? So um, I, that's it. I digress. But so obviously the man coverage hasn't worked the last two weeks. I know they didn't run it the entire time. Um, however, you do get the pick six. I can't wait to can't wait to go watch the tape because I want to see if Devondre was in man coverage or if he was playing very aggressive underneath. He was. He was. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to check this week. Was um, it was very obviously man one. Uh, they're going to play cover one. And, and your inside backer was going to be straight up man on the empty receiver, that third receiver to the trip side. And as soon as they shuffled that running back out, you saw it. And then they got out of it. And, you know, as soon as Devondre, for whatever reason, they got out of that man check because an empty on Washington's first touchdown to Gibson, I believe it was, on that Texas route, that little skinny angle, um, they got out of that check. And I didn't understand that. It's like they didn't trust Quay Walker to play man to that side or whatever. So they spot dropped him and it was just an easy throw over the top from Heineke. And I didn't, I didn't understand that. Yeah. And another play too, uh, now that you mentioned that, not, not the Texas route, but another time we, we mentioned this offline, you had pre-snap motion and you seen the man coverage DB in order to avoid all the pre-snap traffic. He had to go literally 10 yards away from the line of scrim scrimmage ball was snapped, dumped out into the flat, the running back big gain. I mean, there's, there's positives, there's pros and cons that come with playing man coverage the way they did. And, um, again, like we said, I'm glad you pointed that out because that's the positive. you got to pick six out of it by playing man coverage. The negative, you expect Jair Alexander to be able to cover Terry McLaurin. You just do. He's the highest paid corner in the game, and he failed. That's, you know, so enough blame to go around, that's for sure. Hey, one thing we talked about, Jacob, I want to get your take on this too. Um, we were talking about Quay Walker Ryan said he felt like he had a good game. Me personally, and, and again, I'm watching it around family and friends. It was chaos. I mean, it was it was total chaos where I was trying to watch the game. But when I came back and looked at the stat line, I mean, you had Quay Walker, 13 tackles, one pass deflection, and two quarterback hits. Seems like he was around the ball all game long. What did you think, Jacob? Yeah, well, he's always around the ball. That's not necessarily his <laughs> issue. I guess you can. I I could be around the ball all the time. I could get you like fifteen. Can you make thirteen tackles? tackles? Can you make thirteen tackles? Yeah, but they may be like twenty yards down the field. Is the problem? <laughs> you know you. what I mean? So like you you, I'd be the guy piling on kind of thing. And y'all know that I so so f he finished. I believe yeah, total, yeah, total tackles. Quay finished number one. He had two quarterback hits. Um, that being said, I just. Gosh, as much as I'm a big Clay Walker fan, I want to buy his jersey. I'm still going to buy his jersey, number seven linebacker. That's me all day. <sighs> that being said, I, I give the guy all the credit in the world. He just looks lost out there. He looks just like he's not playing the same game as he did in, in, in college. And um, I don't know if it's necessarily that we're putting him out there on an island and we're expecting him to do too much. Maybe if we – maybe we're, you know – we're, we're basically expecting him to be Quay Walker uh, – not Quay Walker, I'm sorry. We're expecting him to be De 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 Devondre. And uh, even Devondre is not really being Devondre. So we can't expect Quay to do that. 
necessarily, but I do see flashes, and I think I want to see us blitz him more. I don't understand why we do not do that. Like I, I, I believe, like two weeks ago, I saw a stat that I think it was Joe Barry's defense had the least amount of four rushers ever, or the you know, it was like the most amount of four rushers period, least amount of five rushers, least amount of six rushers, least amount of cornerbacks blitz, least amount of free safeties blitz. Send them. Let's just see what happens. We've seen what happens when we don't. You know, it's very par, very not great. Uh, we have all the talent in the world. We're not utilizing it, I feel like, right now. It's like, um, you know, we, we got guys like Razul. I say, I say Razul's kind of making plays. He's flashing, but he's just never making the play. Like, I want to see guys starting to just become playmakers, become that. What is this star position? I, supposedly we were supposed to have this star position where guys are supposed to be able to flash around. They're supposed to make plays. They're supposed to be like just, you know, the 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 Buda Baker or the freaking Tyron Matthew of the the we don't have that. Where are these where are these guys? Where's the star player? Why aren't they shining? I don't get that. Yeah, where's Darren Coach Sharp? Nodding. Why, why are, oh, wait, wait. Take where's it the, easy. Take it easy. Like, yeah. he, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Coach. What were you going to say? Yeah, and that, that's that's an awesome point, Jacob. It really, really is. And it just kind of shows the intelligence that you guys have as fans, which is awesome. Because you're absolutely right, I think. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be a schematic thing, right? But how many times did Washington get into empty today? We saw them go empty with a four-man rush, which means you have your star player free because they're going to play cover one behind it, right? So you got six dudes playing coverage. You got four dudes rushing. And then what are you doing with that star player? Well, they decided to spy with the star player, which is really, really tough. I, it's a great idea if you're going against somebody who loves to attack the middle, right? Heineke is literally hitting the flats or check downs or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's like you've got this extra dude. The offensive line can only block five because you're an empty and you're sending four, which is allowing them to combo your literal best pass rusher. So sometimes they're just diving a guard inside with the center on, on Kenny Clark, or sometimes they're just pushing that out and moving the pocket a little bit to your defensive end, be it Preston or Rashawn or whoever. So, yeah, those guys are disadvantaged because you're hanging this dude out in the middle of the field with no real responsibility and nothing to do. So it's almost like you're wasting a player. But real quick, I want to touch on what Zach Miller had said in the chat. Um, he kind of talk, talked about uh, Jair um, and, and and moving around with your number one receiver last week against the Jets. And you're absolutely right that they did that against the Jets last week and, and pretty much ja shut them down. The tough thing with that is you can really easily, as an offense, take him out of the run fit, right? So if you don't have one of your best tacklers and one of your best secondary edge setters in the run fit anymore – because he's literally just running with a go route when you're running buck sweep or toss or whatever. Um, it takes him out of the run fit, and that's why it's so important to maybe at times go ahead and, and put him with number one. But as Clayton was saying, um, play a little zone so that you can get that secondary edge fit because it's pretty easy to crack an outside backer if the outside backer is a nickel. Yeah, good point, man. Good point, yeah. Obviously, here in the chat, elevate, Elevated Sean said, once again, I blame the loss on the offense. The D can't can only do so much. They held them to 23, which three were gifted by the fumble, by the fumble punt. Now, I know we touched on it briefly there with Amari Rogers. You just, you've just you got to make the move. This experiment is over. And the fact that they stayed with him this game, man, you know me, this is hunky go Dory Clayton. That's, that's going like to give the guy a chance, man. Kid off the boat. That's, a, that's Clayton cutting <laughs> his kid off the boat and be like, learn Bro, swim. I'm telling you. <laughs> Dude, I, just have him carry some bags or something. What's crazy is Ryan. He gets in the game and he looked like our best receiver. I what? well, the the funny thing no. is, I was just talking. I was I was mentioning that on the podcast a little bit, and it's like you know, he's he's once he catches the ball, he's got some burst, he's got some wiggle, and it's like I don't know why he can't do that after he catches a punt, but for whatever <laughs> reason, when he catches a punt, he's he's out there just like jogging and he's not doing. It. Fine. I mean, it, the, the decision is easy. Let get him off the punts, and and I'm I'm excited to see what he can do as a receiver. But I mean, if for whatever reason, if that's the way his his mind works, great. But it, the decision this, should be easy going forward. This yeah, may I sound agree. like a an easy out. One time when I was again, I'm not going to try to pretend like I'm an NFL player, but one, one time, time at band camp. Well, at band camp, I had a flute, <laughs> and uh, no, I, I I literally they're like, go back and catch his punt, and I just remember being like. You want me to catch what? And I just went back there and I just remember sitting there 
watching this punt and I could catch balls. I could catch things, but just the fact that I knew that there was a ball in the air and there was 11 guys barreling <laughs> downs to me. I just was like, and I just pooped, man. I, I forgot what my hands were doing. I didn't know how to catch balls anymore. I just, I, I lost it. And I, to me, understanding that a guy like that has that same emotion, but add in you have 11 million people watching you at any given time like okay i get that but then the coaches need to understand that that guy is about to poop the bed we need to not let him sit there he does not he's not ready for prime time we've seen this in our i i don't know how you do that but i have to imagine there's a there's a process there where you see well and that's a good that's a good point too it's it's un it's unfair to amari in a sense because i don't think he's been a terrible football player in terms of what he's showed us i mean he hasn't had many opportunities on offense and i think he's done a good job it's unfair that the entire fan base hates him and wants him cut from the team when really he's just being put in a position that he's going to fail. We know he can't do it. So why she do we keep putting him out there to fail so that everybody can hate him? He wasn't a returner. That's not what his no. role was supposed that to was be. That was never his thing. No. You're right. You're exactly no. right. You know, he, he got a couple of shots at Clemson with it. But, you know, in, in Clemson, this dude was your slot guy who's going to run that two-step slant, what we call a slip route as a comp route and he's going to make everybody else wrong because he's quick off the ball. Right. So yeah. like, that's what he, he doesn't need to sit back there for four and a half seconds with some of the hang time that, that Tress way was putting on this thing and yeah. stand under this. Like you're absolutely right. He's set up to fail. It's unfair. You have two and a half seconds to think like, how am I going to mess this up? How am I going to mess this up? How am I- oh, I messed it up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. hey, here's, here's one bright point though. It seems like every single week with the with the the minimum snaps that Enig Barr gets, the dude flashes. That's true. I mean, he had That's true. two more quarterback That's hits true. today, and he recorded a sack, had a tackle yeah. for a loss, and three tackles. I mean, that's uh what that does, and, and this is the nerd in me. I'm immediately thinking two years from now, if we decide to move on from Preston Smith and free up all that cap. Um, you've got a guy possibly in place, and by then he's going to be even better. They seem to have hit on that late round pick, in my opinion, at least the early, early going anyway, for sure. So um, that was exciting to see. Now here, I'm going to be the negative Nancy here, and this is my my little whipping boy, and I'm just going to throw it out there. You guys know who I'm talking about already, Darnell Savage. Oh. Every time I see a big play, Darnell Savage is somewhere he in the just neighborhood. Goes there going, oh. Listen, on that touchdown pass, yes, Stokes got burned. Okay, I'm getting used to it, to be honest with you. I'm not surprised anymore. But Stokes got burned, right? But here you have Darnell Savage scraping the back back line of the end zone, and it's like he was the only threat to your responsibility. How are you nowhere near him? And, and by nowhere near him, I mean, he always seems to come into the frame. I would stop coming in the frame. If oh. I was, you know, I'd be like, I'm staying out of the camera <laughs> shot. But I want to know your all's take. Am I being too hard on Darnell Savage or what? Because I, free safety, in my opinion, is one of the most important positions in every great defense in the history of the game. What do you think, Coach? Am I being too hard on Savage? Um, I don't think so at all. I think he's – honestly, a step slow. So if you go back to the formation that he was reading, the covers that he had, he has to read the number two. So they're coming out of a stack formation where one receiver's on the line, one's directly behind him. You know, at, at that point in time, it was Gibson. And all, I mean, if you're going to play empty the way that they do and you're going to man one and then you're just going to play zone behind it, in my opinion, I, if I remember correctly, it was catch two that they were playing behind it. So you literally read the number two receiver. If he goes vertical – or out, you know, you start to pass that off. But once he right. once he breaks the hips of the outside backer, in this case it was Quay. I know he's an inside backer, but we, uh, coverage responsibility-wise, he's the outside backer. Once he passes what we call the hard deck, that's your dude man. It's it's easy as, as pie. We get 16-year-old kids to do it, you know, on <laughs> a routine basis, and he's just a, a, a step slow. Like, it's a well-placed ball by Heineke, don't get me wrong, but it's easily picked. You know, on a, on a, that skinny little Texas, if you're actually reading that, it's just it's it's a it's a strange thing to me. I, I'd have to go back. I'd, I don't want to be just completely damning on the guy right now. But watching it live, I was like, oh, yeah, he's he's back. I don't know if he got a bad read from his tackle or what, but it wasn't great. Yeah, I agree. What do you think, Ron? Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. 
I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Yeah, I, I, the one thought I had on that one play, I know the announcers had said that was Stokes not carrying him far enough, um, which is probably true. But at the same time, had he gone a little further out, it still is going to be completed because mm-hmm. Savage was so far away way on that so it, it, it was a doomed play unless Stokes just ran with him which is not his job um I do know last week I was and, and again it's hard to especially with safety play if I don't have the understanding that you know Sam and coach have in terms of what their job is but I I, w- I was at least encouraged by his willingness to play um his willingness to come up and actually tackle I mean the, the amount of times that he came up in front of Quay Walker to make the tackle that Quay wouldn't even make was impressive to me so I like that that amount, but it, it does make sense what what you're saying as far as being a step slow, because it always seems like he's just he's not quite there, and I have a hard time blaming him, because it's like well I don't know what he should have done a little bit better, but yeah I mean if right. if he could just make that decision the right decision a little bit quicker he probably does get there a lot more. So I don't know I I haven't watched a ton of of Savage I know he he you know PFF gives him terrible grades and I know you've been watching him a lot and and are not encouraged by him and I just generally assume he's doing a bad job. But like I said, last week he was not great, but but at least he was willing to come up and make a tackle, which so many people are not willing to do. And in this game, yeah, that that touchdown wasn't great. Other than that, I don't know. I, I I know the whole defense isn't really doing what they're supposed to be doing, and he seems to be one of them. That's about the best I can surmise from that group. Gotcha. Go ahead, Jake. All I can say is that bad luck, Paul, our Viking fan resident on our podcast, has given them the sixth year option. So that's all I can say is. He wants well, us to give him the sixth year option, and all I can uh, just shut up. This here's <laughs> the way I look at that position, especially you know if, if you want to watch really good red zone play, and you guys are going to roll your eyes like you always do, go watch the Patriots run their red two. Their red oh, two. Here is we go, good. Clayton on the Patriots. Here we go. Their red, their red yeah, two is the reason they won so many championships. Their red two is the reason that Nick Saban is the king of college football. Now, I say that because w- when you look at a safety playing, you know, playing free safety, playing that center field, that last line of defense, you either want him to be aggressive or extremely safe. And what Savage, in my opinion, and I've watched a lot of the snaps, he's right in the middle. It's yeah. like he's not aggressive at all, and he's not even safe in some cases. It's, it's, yeah. it's like he just – you got to get off the – never mind. I'm about to say something about I was going to say you got you to take a leak or get off the pot, right? We'll, we'll keep it. PG 13 here. Now I'm going to get to a super chat here in the, uh, in the comments and Mike knows how to get our attention. He sent four, four dollars and 99 cents. And he said, fellas, it's time to face the facts. The Rogers era is over time to be sellers. And I hope for as many losses as possible. Force 12 to R E T I R E. So, let me think here a minute. Let me gather my thoughts. <laughs> Can I give you a hot take? Yeah, let's hear it. All right, Mike. Number one. You better Mike say we're tanking me. for Will Levis too. You better say we're tanking for Will Levis. Mike. Mike's a good. Oh God. Mike's a good guy. He's been around for a long time. He's always helping us out. Um, I. I. Here's what I'll say. I think that we win 100 percent if Jordan Love is the the quarterback against the Giants. 
I think we maybe win against the 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 Jets if just because we're playing in a system. That's all we're doing. We're not asking him to do anything other than do what the heck we're telling you to do. It's just nothing but just we we run two times, we pass one time, we we pass two times, we run one time. We have a system, we have everything that we're gonna do. We're not asking you to make we're not asking you to throw a bomb down to Lazard. We're not asking you to throw a bomb down to Dobbs. We're not asking you to do anything. We're literally telling you just we're gonna run these three plays in our system. We're gonna get a third down. We're gonna we're, we're gonna progress that to a first down. I just feel like Jordan Love doesn't have the confidence to stray from whatever the heck Matt LaFleur says, this is what we're going to do. And that game plan will get you a, a first down. I'm just saying I, I yeah. would bet dollars to donuts. If I'm Homer Simpson, if I'm oh. jets and <laughs> jets and giants, I think we win both those games. hundred percent. Can I, can I jump on that real quick, Clayton, before Absolutely. you, because I know you, I know you have a lot of thoughts on that, but when I heard you, Jacob say that on your podcast um, last week, I remember thinking, Come on, man. You, you, you I was with him. you, and then you <laughs> took it. Yeah, you took it just a little too far. But let's think about just this game, because because again, it's it's a hot take and it sounds stupid and everything. But just this game. Wow. How All many right. throws did we did we even make that were complicated throws that that a, a middle school kid couldn't? They're all at the line of scrimmage. Every single throw. Seventy percent of his passes were off target. So what are we getting just just in the passing game? What are we getting from Aaron Rodgers, Mister Fifty Million Dollars, that we couldn't get from a guy that's even a subpar quarterback? They were all Sounds off bad. target, every single pass, and none of them were were comp- I shouldn't say none, but very few. Almost, almost every throw was at the line of scrimmage. So that's number one. Number two, what are the odds that when you're up fourteen to three, and you're not passing well, and you're running the ball well? And you're playing a team that's playing too high shell. We abandon the run if Jordan Love is the quarterback. Zero. We only did that because because Aaron Rodgers yes. is there. That's the yeah, only reason 100%. we're abandoning the run. So it's exactly. it's not Rodgers' fault. But but again, how much better do we get in just that one facet? Fourth and one. What are the odds in fourth and one that we go for it and throw the ball if Jordan Love is our quarterback? Zero. There's no Zero. chance. Yeah. So. Just, just, just by virtue of the fact that Rodgers isn't there, and we aren't forcing every single thing to Aaron Rodgers to make things happen. I'm not that, saying that no Rodgers. I'm that. not saying Love is better than Rodgers in any capacity. Right. I'm not saying right. that. I'm just saying in situational football, we probably would have been well versed and better to just well, put Love in that situation. And and that's true. But then on top of that, the fact that Rodgers has plummeted to such a a, a terrible degree right now that yeah. every single one of his passes are so far off base. They're hitting the dirt. They're they're right behind. I mean, Amari. Some of the best catches today were Amari because he's twisting backwards and catching the throws that are way behind him. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 so bad that I'm I'm hearing you say that, Jacob, and I'm cringing like, oh, dude, that's that's such a ridiculous take. But as I'm thinking about it, what's wrong with it? I can't think of anything that's that's wrong with that. So, anyways, Clayton's gonna tell us what's wrong with that. In no, a no, second. I, I, just want, I just wanted to jump in there for a second. I want to hear Coach Hani. I, I like this group bullying that's about to take place. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm here for it, man. I'm on the bully train. I got bullied all through Uh-oh. high school. I'll, I'll, I'll wear the big pants. No, hey, Zach Miller is dead on with this again. How many were checked out of her or or were just, you know, um, or, you know, hot right out of. Because bottom line, you know, you have an offensive line coach as your yeah. offensive coordinator. He wants to run the ball. And you're running the ball 12 times in a game that you probably I, I don't get that. No, you start out, you started the game out running buck sweep and attacking these soft Washington edges and crushing it. Right. I, I'm, I'm in the first quarter. I'm like, oh yeah, Jones is getting over a hundo today. He's getting two tutties. Dylan's gonna wake up. Like you're gonna watch this offensive line all of a sudden come alive and things are gonna be great, right? You're gonna protect with play action pass. You're gonna really set some things up, and then it's gone. You know, as soon as that lead got challenged, even not disappeared, mm-hmm. but seven three, that lead got challenged. The run game disappears, and I got to think it's twelve. I can't, I can't, in my mind, I can't think that an offensive line coach is like, you know, what our best option is putting this makeshift line that I built yesterday yeah. out there against this Washington pass rush and letting Rogers go, Rogers go to work. I don't, I, I can't fathom that. Yeah, Mo, keep in mind though. Matt LaFleur is calling the plays, not the offensive line coach, right? So we got to kind of say one more thing real quick. (laughs) Yeah, go go ahead, Jacob. I'm I'm bloody. I'm laying on the curb. (laughs) Give him a couple more kicks, will you? (laughs) 
I'm just saying, bro. Like, I, I'm so sick of seeing Matt <laughs> for when they ask him, they're like, well, like, maybe you should brush the ball like more than 12 times. He goes, oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's Every a great week. idea. I should probably do that. Like, that's it. And it's like, what do you do when you're on the sidelines? Do you, are you right. picking out your next eyebrow color? Like, what are you doing, man? Are you, are you talking about, you know, where you are? You I, call the plays, will, brother. You, I, I will say that kind of goes to maybe what Coach Hahn is saying, though. I mean, what? Let's just say you're calling a run, and your quarterback checks, and your quarterback checks out of it, and then you go to the podium, and, and they're like, "Hey, you should probably run the ball more. Why aren't you doing that? What are you going to say? Are you going to throw Rodgers under the bus? Probably not. Yeah. Nope. So he's he's sitting there yes. saying, "Yeah, we probably should." Uh, well, I, but that's the thing, Matt Lafleur. Other head coaches would. Matt Lafleur would never do that. He's he's everybody's buddy. Matt he's Lafleur's not that guy. Nice. He's not too that nice. smash you in the mouth kind of kind of coach. So I think there is a possibility. I think there is a possibility. Yeah. Those are getting checked out of and 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 Matt LaFleur has no way of answering that question is my thought. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Clayton. Tell us we're wrong. (laughs) All right. No, listen. First of all, I just want to say this. We keep talking about the eyebrows. All right. For so many years. So many years. Look at my eyes. So many years. I had to stare at Mike McCarthy on the sideline. And I thought, (laughs) why can't we have a coach that looks like he can do more than three jumping jacks? Why? Why (laughs) And now we get one, and it's like all of a sudden he's the sexiest coach alive, and he he waxes his eyebrows. And I'm just like, I just want a happy medium. I want a guy. I I look at the screen on Red Zone. So, wait, wait. You just want him to take away one eyebrow. Just. Shave I, need, one I just need an average looking <laughs> give me Jeff Fisher with the mustache right in the middle. I'm good. Like, I don't understand you why we gotta go from someone who's morbidly obese to someone who looks like a prima donna. Like, I don't understand it. But you're trying to as say far as Aaron Rodgers, not a Playboy model. That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah. As far as Aaron <laughs> Rod, when we did chalk talk last week, I highlighted two plays that Jordan Love can't make. Period. Now, those are two plays. Right. You guys are exactly right on the fourth and one. If Jordan Love's in that ball game, they're running the football, and you're probably picking it up. You know, it's funny, Jacob. Before before you got on, you know, we were uh, kind of talking offline, and I pointed out that the Packers only averaged three point two yards per carry today. Right now, you do the math. You run it three times. You're punting there, right? You're right at ten yards, but you're under ten yards. Okay. Um, I think it's important to understand that, but at the same time. The RPO aspect of this offense, it's not a situation where they're going, we're going to run the ball. It's we're going to come to the line, we're going to read our keys, and okay, if we have the hat count here, we're running the football. If we have the hat count there, we're throwing the RPO. So it's it's just a it's a real easy argument. It's a real easy thing to say, well, Aaron Rodgers just doesn't want to run the ball. That fourth and one, there was a hat count on the outside. What's crazy is – when he throws the RPO, when he throws it, what kind of looked like a bubble again, I've got kids screaming and family running around. It's kind of hard to remember. But the the release route, I don't know if you noticed, Coach, wide open. He he dumps it to the RPO underneath. They completely bid on it. If he throws to the deep pass, probably a touchdown, and everybody's going, man, Aaron Rodgers pulled it off. But you're exactly right with Jordan Love. Fourth and one, Jordan Love in the game, they're running the football. And me, I'm wanting them to run the football. When they threw the pass, I seen the the I seen the deep release, and I thought, God, he was open. He threw to the wrong receiver. But on top of that, I literally looked back at Mandy and I said, Why did we not run the freaking football? Yeah. So you're you're I can't argue with what you guys are saying. Now, if you're going to sit here and try to tell me that Jordan Love is a better quarterback than Aaron no. Rodgers, absolutely not. And I know that's not what you guys are saying. You're simply saying that's not what I the said, offense Clayton. will be molded differently. <laughs> Jordan Love was in. What did he say? That's not what I said. <laughs> Saying situation, like you know. So, again, the game once again two weeks in a row comes. Which, wait, wait, can I just Ryan? What is your background? What is that? What are you doing? <laughs> I got to change that. That's distracting everybody every time I come on here. Uh, it's it's what a movie this? called American Movie. You got to check it out. It's a very good movie. That's why, what it's why do from. They both look like they haven't showered in two and a half weeks. That's because they I'm probably doing. haven't showered in two and a half weeks. <laughs> okay, it's good enough answer for me. <laughs> So two weeks in a row, we, we kind of talked about this earlier. Okay. Two weeks in a row, we lost the game because of special teams, period. It's easy for us to sit here and say it's Aaron Rodgers' fault for not running the football. 
it's easy for me to sit here and say Jair Alexander got burned all day by, you know, by McLaurin. But at the end of the day, it's a muff punt that led to a field goal that cost us the game. But next week, it's going to be something else. Like, it's literally – you remember the old Three Stooges, the black and white Three Stooges episodes? Remember when they had the, the leaky boat? You know, they plug one hole and another one starts leaking. It's literally what it is. And to me, yeah. that says we have a void of talent. I don't look at this game and go, the coaches lost this game. No. Your best DB got burned by their Wrong. best receiver in a man-on-man situation. Got got cooked, period. So that's the way I see it. Maybe I'm too simple. I like to believe – you're going to roll your eyes. I like to believe Bill Belichick when he says – Players win them and coaches lose them. But you're right. The right players on the field. I feel like I feel like counter. But we lost. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You just (laughs) counter. Funny how it works. I really don't. I think he's got a point though with special teams, and I I will disagree with you, uh, Clayton. I don't think you have a void of talent. I think you're misusing your talent. You know what I mean? Like, yes. bottom line, and we talked about this already, but Amari Rogers is not the dude back there. You have very, very talented dudes. You probably have the best, if not the best, top three running back in the NFL who right. you're not giving the ball to. Let the dude go back there and, and get some opportunities. For whatever reason, we're just so stuck in this this special teams is a stepbrother type of situation <laughs> that we don't pay attention to it. Like, you have plenty of talent, dog. You're just not using it. What's funny is everything that we've talked about, every topic, at some point, Jacobs went like this. <laughs> we're, we're all coming to the realization that it, it's not the coaches, it's not yeah. the players, well, that, yeah. it's everything. That and that that's the problem. I and mean, it really is. A, I, when you were saying that, I was even thinking, you know, let's say that that muff punt didn't happen. Do we feel good about this game? I don't know if we, oh, first of all, we probably yeah. we probably still don't win the game, but we don't feel good about what. I, what did the offense do the entire game? Right. Nothing. They had one drive the entire game. They did zero outside of that. The only reason, two weeks in a row, the only reason they were able to sustain drives is penalties. That happened last week, too. The only the only time they sustained a drive down the field, they had about three penalties that pushed them down there, and then they had the back shoulder to Lazard. They, they can't move down the field without penalties. It's hey. They can't get first downs. Hey. They can't pass beyond the line of scrimmage. I mean, it's it's it is really really bad, you know. And and like you said, it's you yeah. Know, if it's not one thing, it's worse. next. That that when we came out of this game right out of the gate, and we score a touchdown, and the defense looks good, and the special teams collapses. It's like, well, here we go. Now we got this, isn't it? But you're right. It's always something, but it's also everything. It's yeah. literally everything is bad. That's gonna be the title of this tweet. It's always something, <laughs> but it's everything. <laughs> yeah. and, and you want to know what's t-shirt. worse is that, that I'm sure just because of the world we're going to beat the bills we'll probably beat the bills so everybody's like okay yeah, yeah. this is a super bowl contender team blah blah blah. why can't they put together all four aspects we'll beat them because it's a fluke or something like that you know it's, it's just going to be one of those games where we just put it together and then everybody holds us up like that's i feel like that's what's been our almost our curse is that people think and we think at the same time for the last 20 years we're a given we're a playoff team we just basically coast. We walk into any game and we go, yeah, we're, we're going to win this. And then we go on to the NFC North Championship and then we're going to just go on to lose in the NFC Championship playoff game. Like, that's just what we do, you know? And it's like, I <laughs> I think we're we're coasting way too much right now, even for Aaron Rodgers' sake, which, gosh, if you can coast where Aaron Rodgers is like, you're coasting too much, maybe you need to step off the ayahuasca and maybe just get in the back of the weight room a little bit and just start you, pumping dude, some real iron. Apparently that dude's still squatting a lot, according to what to what he was saying uh, on Pat McAfee's okay, show. Okay, cool, but squatting in his reality or our reality? <laughs> like, he's doing like a five-pound bar. He's like, I am so strong. I, I, I didn't say he was awake when he did it. I'm just saying he said he squatted a lot. <laughs> Personal record. I just imagine he thinks he's he thinks he's squatting, you know, six hundred pounds, and then he, he comes down on the aisle. He's got some guy throwing like, donuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So we're coming down the stretch here. As we wrap up, I want to I want to point this out. I, I've watched football now since nineteen ninety four. That's when I really fell in love with football. Nineteen. What happened before that? A long time. Well, before that, <laughs> Roadhouse. All right. So, um, <laughs> but. I want to say this, that, you know, it's probably around 2000 I really started paying attention to the X's and O's of football. This happens 
every five or 10 years, really every five years, you have this rollover of things that are popular, whether it's offense, defense, whatever scheme it is. I'm looking at all the teams that run this Matt LaFleur offense, with the exception of Minnesota, which in my opinion is a little more of a hybrid. It yep. seems like the NFL has caught up with this style of offense. What do you think, Coach? Dude, you're dead on. Football is so cyclical, and it, it, you just see it all the time, right? So you got a, a West Coast offense, and then you have the counter to the West Coast offense is going to be your heavy blitzing 4-4-3 or your 3-3 stack, right? So that now all of a sudden we're into this more of a, a zone, zone read type of offense, this Lafleur, where, you know, you're going to settle in noose and you're going to come up, and then all of a sudden the defenses get really, really smart. You start seeing a 3-4 mint where they start messing with things with their alignment. Um, you start doing some read stuff or whatever. But what what really hurts those defenses is good old school power football. And no, no less than 10 times, I saw Washington run power today where they're just gap scheme. They're just mashing the edge. They're getting an extra hat to it. You know what I mean? So you're dead on with it where modern defenses are catching up to this understanding where their players are in conflict now and how to protect those type of players. Um, you got to evolve or you're going to be forgotten. And it doesn't matter how good your own line is or your running back receiver quarterback. It doesn't matter how good you are. If schematically there's a dude there ready for it. So you're dead on football is so cyclical. And now we're going to, I mean, pretty soon we're going to get back to 30 personnel sets and NFL teams running we wing T, which would be awesome. But no. That would be awesome. Which you've kind of you've kind of seen a little bit of it with Baltimore. And it's funny, I just watched Kansas City score another touchdown. They 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 looks like they're starting to boat race the 49ers. And the one thing that Andy Reid, everybody needs to give credit to Andy Reid for is he was willing to evolve constantly. Yeah. Every time that someone caught up to his offense, he adjusted. Ryan, is yeah. that something we're gonna be able to do under the Matt LaFleur uh, you know, coaching? I'm not having a lot of confidence in. considering we can't do the basic stuff right in front of us. I mean, we're talking about broad sweeping changes to everything he knows about football, and we 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 can't get basic stuff going on like, you know, run the ball or, you, you can't know. You get a line. Yeah. You couldn't get a line today. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 hard to imagine they evolved uh, to that to that extent considering the the minor things that that we really can't do. But no, that was that was a good I hadn't really considered that. I heard a ton about the evolving defenses. I hadn't really thought about the Specifically, the Shanahan style offense is getting hit, but I'm sitting here thinking Packers are really struggling, the Rams are really struggling, the 49ers are really struggling. So I, I, I got to look at that. I got to look at that because I, I hadn't really thought about that. But that is a good point. This that is the cutting edge offense. So defenses are going to want to prim primarily attack that, and they're really getting hit this year. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something just to kind of keep our eye on for sure yeah. um, as we move forward. And again, like I said, people like Andy Reid willing to uh, willing to adjust. I mean, those are the court, those are the uh, the coaches that are going to stay in the league the longest. And he's he has put together a Hall of Fame resume. And I wouldn't have said that yes. ten years ago. You know, um, Jacob, send us home here, man. You got any parting words? We got about two minutes, bro. I mean, I got all sorts of words. I'm just saying, I, <laughs> just can't say them on the air. <laughs> I just, I'm, I, I just, I just. There's a lot of things, like I said, like I don't I'm not one of the guys that's going to say, like, fire this guy, fire that guy. But I do seem to like like Ryan said, we are looking at certain situational things where it's where we're trending towards. We let this happen or that happen. And I don't see us pulling the fire alarm and being like, OK, this needs to, to change. And I think Ryan said it maybe, I don't know, two or three, four or five podcasts ago where I don't see it changing because this is where we're set. We're stuck on our ways. And even this last week, we supposedly made some changes, but I didn't see any changes. All I saw is that we we put our players in other positions where they got burned all the time. And yeah. I, I wasn't a big Joe Barry fan. I'm not a big Joe, Fer Joe Barry fan now, and I'm not necessarily one that wants to his job. I don't want his you know head on a spit or on his on a, on a spate. You know, I I just want him to make adjustments, and I want him to put people in the best positions possible. And I just don't think he's doing it. So. Jerry Gray. There I go. I'll be controversial. Jerry Gray, I think he could do better. There we go. Okay, well, no. it's funny because when I started looking at and now I, I got mad at Clayton for the first time in our chat. I said, you're crazy, Clayton. I don't like you anymore. I'm not going to go yeah. on that podcast no more. <laughs> hate you, sir. That's how we work here at Packer Ant Podcast. A, we hold grudges. Such a bully, man. Such a bully. Right. So, um, <laughs> I, I thought about Jerry Gray, too, and we're about to wrap up. I thought, who could you promote? Seriously, with though, I, I really Joe do Barry consider him guy. being a, a coach. But let me ask you this. 
what is the most talented aspect to our defense? A lot of people would say edge. it was the DB room. I'd say edge. Right? You'd say edge? Okay. I, I feel like in the preseason or offseason, everybody was going, oh, these D, this DB crew is going to be awesome. Jair healthy with what Stokes and Rasul done with the picks. Who's coaching them? Jerry Gray. Jerry Gray's a DB coach. No. I'm sorry. Jair, if Jair is the superstar they say he is, boy, he didn't look like he could play man coverage today. But no. yeah, it's just true. one game. It is. And again, we lose by two points. It's, <sighs> you know, I'm getting tired of saying, come on, guys. It's only two points. Come on, guys. It's three points. <laughs> like, come on. Sooner or later. It's, That's the thing. That's the thing, man. Oh, and, I want and, to congratulate to... everyone. You have broken me. I'm I was going to say, we're doing that through the easy part of our schedule, too. Wait until we play good teams. That's Aww. what's crazy. That's the that's the tough part because, uh, yeah. you know, the Tampa win doesn't look like a good win now, right? So now as we move forward, it's going to be interesting. I know this. Next Tampa week, lineup. there isn't a person – there's not a person on the face of the earth expecting us to beat Buffalo next week. So if this if I was this coach, I'm telling them, you come out next week and you hit them in the freaking mouth. You come out – and you you play as aggressive as you've ever played. We might get beat by fifty, but they're gonna know they were in a dog fight. That's what I'm yeah. telling. So. All gas, no break. Oh God, that, what a way to end it, Coach. <laughs> Want to thank you so much for jumping on here with us, dude. We really appreciate you, Ryan, dude. Thank you for your time. I know you're trying to put out yep. seventy three podcasts tonight, and I really appreciate you, <laughs> Jacob. I want to thank you for bullying me all day long. Yeah, buddy. And I Someone's can't wait. Keep I'm already doing the shoulder shrugs when we get to Green Bay in December. Me and you're gonna be rolling around in front of those white pe- white people, those uh, those uh, white <laughs> rich folks up there in the, in the box. Oh, we're gonna make them very uncomfortable. It's gonna suck. Oh, dude. We're gonna couple couple. Get... Come on, dude. I'm telling you, I was raised by a biker. I was raised by a biker, yeah. and and Jacob fits the mold of every uncle I've ever had in that biker <laughs> gang. We're gonna step up in there with four hundred and fifty dollar yeah. tickets in that box, and those people are gonna be going, "Who in the heck?" Are I'm gonna be wearing cut off jean shorts. What's up? Yes, you're you rolling up in there in the shorts. All right, I, like I should it. take my Fiero yeah, up there. Really make a statement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, this thing's off the rails, guys. Tough loss. Commanders twenty three, <laughs> Packers twenty one. I'm not burying this uh, this ball. I'm burning it tonight. But I appreciate you guys for <laughs> hanging out with us. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world, other than Jacob, who's a bully, and go Pack Go. Seven inches to go. The Peter. 17 to 14. Cowboys out in front. Star begins to count. Takes the snap. He's- Pass is picked off, and who is it? Big B.J. Raji for the touchdown. Pump fake. Wallace picked off. Nick Collins. Nick Collins on the return inside the 10. Leaps for the touchdown.